Oftentimes, when playing a build of your game, you would like to have some debug logs visible, but you'll need to be able to filter and navigate those logs easily without inspector tools. Here's one solution I came up with called Timber Logs, which may be useful. Hi, I'm BGK of Pear Tree Games, and this is creating a runtime debug logger in Unity. I've already created a package with an assembly definition and added it to my project. We'll start with creating a class for all messages to be stored for a given game object. We'll use a list for now, but we'll change that soon. Next, we want a mono behavior in our game to keep track of all of our messages. To make sure we always have a manager, we'll use the runtime initialize on load method, which will be called when the game first loads, but only in the editor or development builds. We're not supposed to use the resources folder, but for this it's okay. Now, we'll need a method to register a log message. We're going to add it as an extension to the monobehavior class. This way, any script can simply call this.timber with a string and it'll be logged to the corresponding game object. We're using the call member name parameter attribute so we know which function was the caller. Now, onto some input. We'll be utilizing the new input system, but we'll manually pull and control all keyboard events so as not to interfere with any custom input modules, like my GamePad UI input module. I've opted to register all commands with Control and Shift. This makes it less likely to collide with other keys, although you may need to change it to something else for your own game. When we activate our keyboard input, we want to disable any input module and reactivate it once we're done.
We'll make a quick script to help out testing all of this. And we'll set up the manager prefab. Okay, things start off without error, but we need to create the UI. We'll be using the mono behavior on GUI method, which uses immediate mode, which is not performance minded and best used for debugging only. Be sure to never use on GUI for user facing UI. Another thing to note is that since we're controlling our input events manually, we are not using the return value for any input field. Now that we can search and select our game object, we'll need to display the logs. The GUI layout.flexiblespace method here makes sure everything is pushed to the left. Naively, we're just going to loop over all messages and create a label for them. So since we're filling up lists with tens of thousands of messages and creating labels for all of them, with a system not concerned with performance, we have a massive performance hit. So we're going to create a new class of a fixed size array, which when filled up, new items will be replacing the oldest ones.
Every time we add an item, we'll increment the starting index and perform a modulo against the capacity. With our indexer, we'll make sure we are within our bounds and make zero start at our current index and loop back and forth no matter what index is requested. I'll test a more real-world example, like every time a state machine transitions to a new state. But we have an issue. We have a bunch of game objects with the same name, so it'll be impossible to tell which is which. I like visual helpers, so we'll place a marker on the currently selected game object. And I forgot to clear the message container when the manager is destroyed, so let's do that now. And while we're here, we'll also save all of our messages to a text file.
Okay, now we want to filter our messages per game object. We'll be using the left and right arrow keys to focus our game object. Once focused, we can filter using the Control, Shift, and F key, or close a single game object's logs with W, or all logs with Q. And there we go, a simple way to add logs to your game. You may want to change the text color or add a background depending on your game, or maybe extend the system to be able to use non-game objects, but I'll leave that for you. Thanks for watching.